You can use simple CSS to make your forms look amazing. In this tutorial, we learn how easy it is to achieve a material design look for our forms. The form labels automatically shift and remain in place when text is entered. If the field is blank, the label moves back down. You'll see this effect used in Google's material design, and it's really simple to achieve using pure HTML and CSS. We'll be examining a few very cool properties, so we'll take this video slightly slower than usual. Let's start by using basic HTML and CSS to build and style our page. I'm just creating a simple form with one text field and one label. Right now our form is a basic bare bones version. It works fine. You can enter your name, there's a label and there's the familiar blue outline that appears each time you click a form field. The problem is, it's not very stylish. So let's fix the form's appearance with a few CSS styles. That's a little better. Now for the label part of the form. Using positioning, we can place our label over the field. The transition property is where the magic happens. Transition takes three values, the styles affected, time for transition, and the effect of the transition. I'll explain these in more detail shortly. Let's apply some styling to the input field as well. The point to note here is to get rid of all the borders by setting the border property to none. Then, set a border bottom and style it using basic border properties. It's also important to set the z-index of the input field to higher than that of the label. This is so that the field and not the label is clickable. Because the field has no background, the label can still be seen underneath. Z-index works like stacking or layers in Photoshop. Higher the z-index value, higher the layer. So there's our form so far. However, that blue outline is still there. The label doesn't move and any text input overlaps the label. We'll fix this in the next step. The input focus and input valid elements come into action when you click your mouse on a text field to activate it. Focus means the field has been selected. Valid means the field has a suitable entry, like words, telephone numbers, email addresses, etc. The blue outline is an indicator that the text field has been clicked and is ready for us to type something into it. If you want to get rid of the blue outline, we simply set the outline to none. We want our bottom border to turn blue instead, so we simply insert the border bottom property and styles in this section. This tells the field to change its bottom border to blue when it is clicked. Finally, to animate the label, we first need to select it as a reference to the input field 
when that field is clicked. The plus selector selects the element that comes immediately after its parent element. In this case, the label comes immediately after the input element when the field has been clicked and or contains text. In other words, the label style is affected each time the text field is clicked. Because we use the transition property on the label, whatever styles we want changed will be transitioned. In this case, we want the label's top position, font size and color to change. And there's the effect. Let's see what's really going on with the transition property. If we increase the time value to 3 seconds, the transition takes longer to run. The ease value is basically the style in which the transition happens. There are many different styles for transition and motion. Finally, the all value represents which properties we want to have affected by the transition. All means every property that we list, i.e. top, font size and color in this example. If we only want color to transition and nothing else, we can use just color. Let's say we only want the top to transition. We can set top only. Color and font size change immediately, but only the top property is transitioned. Since we want all three to transition, we put all. The best part is, once you've set up your input label and focus properties, they will apply to all other text fields as well. So if we add a new field for, say, website, the effect is the same. I feel the fields need more space between them. There are many ways to do this. I'll use a simple div with a class called divider, whose height I can adjust as needed. Fifty pixels might be too much spacing, so let's change it to thirty pixels. There are a few important topics we've combined in this one tutorial, so you may need to watch the video again to get the hang of everything. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and CSSU next time.